This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bailey's House of Guns and the MBRWC. Have you guys ever seen that movie, Urban Cowboy, with John Travolta, where he rides a mechanical bull? Well, this is that. The World Championship Qualifiers, that's Mechanical Bull Riding World Championship, is taking place July 24th and 25th at Dillon, Montana History Days at their Frontier Event Center. July 24th is the practice round starting at 1 p.m. July 25th is a competitive round. $50 per entry fee. Men and women 18 and over are invited to compete. It's funny because a woman won it last year. She beat everybody. All the guys. I think there were some real bull riders in there. She won 4500 bucks. It's a one-handed endurance ride. So it's not an eight-second ride. It's whoever can stay on the longest in proper bull riding form. Pretty fun. Check them out on Facebook. There's more details there. Again, that's mbrwc.com. Bailey's House of Guns is a family-owned and operated business based out of Houston, Texas. Look, these guys have supplied law enforcement throughout the state of Texas for years. They also provide lots of great options for hunters. Benelli Shotguns, Weatherby, to name a few. They've got great brands, guys. They've been in the business since 1970. They're a well-known sponsor of rodeo and supporters of rodeo. They sponsor rodeo athletes. They've given guns and ammo to lots of world champions, Anafar champions, you name it. Give them a call, 713 713-433. 2475 for more details. Guys, they can ship guns and ammo to FFLs throughout the United States. They support law enforcement. I bet you support law enforcement. Support a local business here in Texas and a United States-based company that can supply you with the guns and ammo I know you want. This is The Gage with host Chance Conradu. Are you freaking serious? It's Conrado. This is The Gage, and I am Chance Conrado. On this episode of the podcast, we have got Katie Vanslyke. Katie is a Instagram celebrity, as they call themselves, Facebook celebrity. She has got a huge following, but it's for good reasons. She's a great figure in the outdoor world, hunting, fishing. She lives that life. She's real. She's legit. Uh, she also shows horses in the AQHA and is very passionate about uh, the Western way of life. She is a great spokesperson for all things outdoor, Western, and really just being a good down-to-earth person. Check it out. How many of these episodes have you done yet? This is number 19. 19? 19. Yeah. Jonathan's going to love that. That's his favorite number. 19 is? That's uh-huh. your lucky 19? Why he, is that his favorite number? I don't know. He says he sees 919 everywhere. Like, nine do, have, have you ever heard of people that see numbers everywhere? Uh-uh. Okay. Well, he, like, sees it in the random places. So he sees 919 or 19 all the time. Mm, I think Jim Carrey had a similar problem, but it was the number 23. Do you ever see that movie? Mm-hmm. The number 23? Don't let your husband get there. No. Ty, you know what I'm talking about? That movie, the number 23? I do not. And also, oh. pull your mic closer. Okay. That's ridiculous. Is that what? Good? And it was, like, the only Jim Carrey movie I can remember that's not The Grinch. Yeah. You don't I, remember uh, Mask? I watched Fun with Dick and Jane last night, actually. Oh, that movie's pretty underrated. Yeah. Yeah, what was that? Yeah, anyway. But yeah, the number 23 goes crazy, and he's like, sees the number 23 in everything. Don't let your husband get that level with the number 19. I don't think it's that bad. No? (laughs) I I bet it wasn't that bad for Jim Carrey either. But it got there. Just saying. If you're talking about numbers, you got to be careful. (laughs) People go crazy. I Googled it. This is the first time I'm ever seeing this movie. I don't I've never think heard it of was it. that good. I've never heard of it. <laughs> it's old. What is it, like 2006? 2007. Mm. So in 2006, I was 10 mm. years old. So You know, Katie, I thought it would be really good to have you on because you're one of these people who isn't in rodeo, mm-hmm. but you grew up on a ranch. Mm-hmm. Your family's in the cattle business. Mm-hmm. You you do AQHA stuff with horses, but also you've got this massive social media following for outdoors for right. hunting yeah i'm i'm actually pretty proud that it's not like a uh I always, okay I, I don't know if i should say this but i'm always glad that my instagram isn't like a tits and ass instagram like it's got like very wholesome family values to it uh-huh. and so i uh i'm actually really proud of that following that i've grown because it's it is for the outdoors and right. for horses and for the cattle aspect and the hunting aspect and all that stuff so i mean let's be real 
that's all Instagram is, is tits and ass. It's Fitness. Funny. Even, I seen the picture of you with that girl, Hannah, who does the catfish thing. Yeah. She's like, okay, I don't think she's going for that, but that's, she is that. Well, that's the thing is, I think she gets a free pass. And Hannah's like, honestly, one of my best friends. So she's like. She's a badass. A really awesome person. Noodling. But she gets kind of a, a free pass because she's in the water all the time. Like, That's true. You're in a bathing suit. She's in a bathing suit. You know? It just so happens she looks good in a bathing and suit. And it just what so do happens do? she has a rocking bod. She does. <laughs> so it works for her. But yeah. she does get a pass. It's not like she's posing in the mirror of the right. gym for three hours. Right. It's like you're actually out there. That's what I say. It's like if I post a picture and I'm in a bathing suit, I'm at the lake or the beach. Right. You know, it's, I'm not going to go. You're not in your bathroom in your apartment. I'm not going to go put on a American. American flag bikini and pose with my AR. You know, that's a thing that girls do nowadays. Is it? Yeah. Where do they get that? Put from? guns and start? nude chicks together, and it just blows guys' minds on Instagram. I guess. And then, yeah. And then you hear all the stories of people accidentally shooting themselves while posing <laughs> for those photos. <laughs> Okay, but it's like there's that company Black Rifle Coffee, and they do some of that, but they do it fun with the with the like okay, so the hunting industry, and then there's like the gun industry, it's totally and the gun different. industry is like yeah, that's a, that's fine. It's like the hunting industry. It's like yeah, let's have a little more like respect <laughs> for ourselves. True. Yeah, I mean because you have to think about the the demographic of people you're pandering to. Right. It's a little different. It's like the fitness industry. That's all vanity. So right. of course you're gonna pop your top and do all that. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I, I try not to judge. It's like, you do you, but it's that's not really the vision I had for what I would put out there and, you know, for the things that, because I know that, like, young girls watch my page and then they message me because they're watching for the horse stuff or, like, sometimes I do makeup things. And it's like, when I'm a parent, who do I want my kid to look up to? So it's like I really try to consider that every time I post something, you know? I mean, that's, I mean, that's smart because yeah. it means you're thinking of other people other than just yourself, which generally okay. when people build social medias, it's not for right. that. And I will say like at first, like, cause I didn't even try to do the whole Instagram thing. It kind of fell in my lap. And so at first, um, you know, I really didn't know how to navigate it and I didn't really have a vision for what I was trying to do. And so sometimes it was just like, oh, I look cute in this picture. I'm going to post it. And it was more kind of like quote unquote thirst traps but not ever like naked, but you know what I'm saying? Like I was definitely doing it just to be cute. And then thirst I was traps? like, I mean, is that how you found your husband through one of your no, thirst traps? <laughs> no, he, uh, he came to the picture before Instagram, but you know, it was like, I definitely after, you know, probably six months of just like gaining followers rapidly. I was like, okay, this is a thing I need to actually you know, put myself into this and show like my values through this because there's a lot of people watching me. And so why not make it actually matter? Right. And so that's when I started, you know, really pushing my faith and really pushing um, more like horse content. And then, you know, cause I, my following grew in spring. And so people didn't even know I hunted until so months been, later. One thing I was wondering, just cause I didn't know, because mm -hmm. I'm not a big Instagram scroller. Right. In fact, until the, show like i don't even use my own instagram for anything right. now i kind of have to i don't have a lot of followers but i got good high quality followers right but uh actually i have followers who have really big followings doesn't make a lot of sense i mean i'm one of them as of this morning so. oh yeah check you out yeah but with somebody like you i mean it, you recently started growing your instagram it's been um i mean it's been like two and a half years uh, but it was kind of weird like i um, it's funny. I did like this big diet and so I felt really good. And so I was in jeans, boots and a tank top and like a camo hat. And me and my buddy were just like on the farm, kind of just being, you know, 19 year old girls and just like, like, let's go take pictures. And it was like, you know, in, in a backfield somewhere. And so I took a picture and posted it, you know, for my couple thousand followers that were just mostly horse people and school people. Right. And for some reason, it was very, like, very, I wasn't half naked, and I wasn't, like, really doing anything spectacular, but for some reason, it got posted on a ton of different pages, and I gained, like, 4,000 followers that week, and then it just, like, every time I posted a picture for a little while, if it was, like, something with horses or something like that, it would get reposted, and so I went from, like, four or 5,000 followers in April to 20,000 by June, and then to 100,000 by November, 
and then 200,000 by April. And then it just like kept going. And so, I mean, I've been pretty stagnant for the last year. Um, yeah, I feel do you like think you- censorship has been pretty high. Like I don't get on the explore page anymore. Yeah. For some reason, but I mean, it's because of what you're posting about, right? It doesn't right. fit the Instagram narrative. And at this point, and I used to care. I used to care so much about likes and about growing. And I used to be neurotic about it because I had like a goal. And I'm very goal oriented, but I get kind of obsessive. And so there for a while, it was like, I have to grow this much per week. My pictures have to get this many likes or it's like not good enough. And then it was like a, a light went off in my head that like, that doesn't matter. Like just put out what is good for you and like what matters to you and don't try to like always be just going for the likes, but put out like actual quality things. And so that's kind of honestly when it went stagnant is when I just like stopped trying to fit into like a a mold and just started posting kind of what I wanted to. And yeah. I mean, that's so interesting to hear you be that uh, self-aware because I mean, as somebody who's grown an Instagram page or grown social media in general, right? I mean, you more than anybody know how dangerously toxic it can be yeah. for your own mental state and all the people around you probably right. too. So, wh- wh- I mean, was it just that it just clicked in your head to well, kind of like, like, hold, let's pump the brakes here or... I can be kind of a... I'm pretty mellow, but I can get really wound tight about passions and about things like that and I can get kind of stressed out. And so, I just like took a step back and was like, I am miserable every day because I'm worried about getting a picture out by 11 o'clock and then one by five o'clock and they have to be new stuff that day. And if I don't have someone to take my picture, I'm freaking out. And you know, like it's, it's Matt, it's also like met with the fact that I was making money, trying to buy a house, trying to do this. So I'm trying to like make it all work. But then my expectations for myself were just too much and like unattainable. So so were you just like kind of walking around in a piss poor mood all the time? Kind of like really? I was like, like my friends and family and Jonathan were like, can you not look at your phone because you're like watching the likes go up at dinner? Can you? And this was like not a giant window like period. It was kind right. of, but it was definitely enough for me to be like, okay, this can, this is definitely a part of my life because it's obviously kind of what has turned into my living and it's turned into things that bring opportunities to me. But at the same time, like if my friends and family are telling me that they don't want to be around me because I'm on my phone too much and and things like that, it's like, you got to take a step back. I mean, that's such a good message for, I think everybody, every person gets like, we walk around like this all day. I mean, I freaking do it. I'm really bad about it. But, you know, I've got like five different Instagram pages that I'm logged into. Mm -hmm. So I'm like flipping through all of them all day. And it's just like, this is not good. If anyone's listening that is having that issue, let me just say, I've never felt freer than when I stopped caring about the likes. And like, like even before I post it, I'm like, I'm not even going to have an expectation for this because you can't even on Instagram anymore with the algorithm because people may like it. They're just not even seeing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Just go into it and post things that are important to you and that you like and just don't even care because you will feel so much better. And I that's easier said than done. But yeah, I was going to say, for some reason, you were able to... It took me a minute to yeah. like finally get myself into that mode of like, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy? That social media is such a weird construct because you are literally putting crap out there about you to people you don't even know especially you Nine hundred thousand between facebook and instagram i think it's a little under 900 but it's like somewhere in that realm i mean but think about the end you don't you don't even know a hundredth of that many people like their names so to be putting that out to them i mean you got to be careful because you're really influencing people and i mean think about like you were talking about thirst traps and kind of the bikini like kids are getting younger and younger on Facebook and Instagram and social media. And it's like, it's a normal thing for like a six year old, seven, eight year old kid to be on those, which is nuts. And and you know what you see that's really weird. It always weirds me out. I wonder if you would agree when like celebrities create Instagram pages for their for their children. Is that weird to you? Because it's weird to me. I think it's definitely like a money-making tactic. I mean, I made one for my dog and she's my child, but I haven't posted on it in like five months. But anyway, 
for your actual child, I do think that's a little much. I mean, post of your kid every now and then on your own thing, but the amount of like sick individuals in the world. That's my And then point. they're just like looking at your child on your Instagram. I mean, or like on their own Instagram. Like I'm sure there's the majority are people who genuinely just think like your kid's cute. But at the same time, I would worry about people getting infatuated with my kid. And then like, you know, people are crazy. Like coming and trying to get it or I don't know, like. I mean, you saw that whole Wayfair thing, Oh, right? yeah. And it's like. What the frick? I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have, I'm not a parent yet, so I don't, I don't really have my uh, decision yet on like if my kid's going to be an avid, you know, appearance on my Instagram or not. But I mean, you got to be careful. Uh, you really do. And I mean, because it doesn't take a whole lot for people to find out where you're at. I don't post right. my kids on Instagram very much. Facebook. I actually, I don't really post on Facebook. Right. I don't even look at Facebook really, but, um, I don't cause I get, people freak me out. People are weird. Lots of people are weird. And so. I am heavy on the blocking button. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, so my Facebook following grew after my Instagram following. And so I'm having to go through that again on Facebook where I'm like, I feel like Instagram has just gotten to the point where I don't have as many haters, don't have as many creepers because I've just spent time blocking people and like weeding them out. And on Facebook, my following kind of grew rapidly this spring. And so I've just, it's kind of overwhelming the weirdos. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about that. I mean, what what is it like in, in your DMs? Uh, I got, a, <laughs> I got a, a dick pic and dick videos yesterday um like how many like he sent like eight in a row so i just like deleted him and then i probably get a dick pic every couple weeks it's not as much as you oh that's not bad it's not as much as you think uh it used to be more yeah (laughs) like i feel like i've literally weeded out a bunch of the people i mean how hard is that on your husband oh he he doesn't care he doesn't doesn't bother first i mean at first because we were like six months into dating when the whole instagram thing kind of started blowing up and so he was a little bit weirded out by it at first, but quickly was like, you know, I'm fine. And then like, you know, when we get, I mean, he gets pretty cool opportunities from it on hunting trips and, you know, going to like really cool hunting events and things like that. And hunting is all he cares about. So really, he doesn't really get bothered by it anymore. Right. But, um, you know, I, I think I'm really blessed with that though. Cause I've seen relationships be ruined by social media. And I think that's really sad that I have to say that, but you know, when girls or guys are, you know, have a following on Instagram and the spouse just can't handle it. So, I mean, I've seen that happen before. So I feel very blessed that Jonathan's like, Psh, no matter. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be mostly you though, like making sure he's reassured or not right. getting pulled into any of those. Right. No. Yeah. We, and we just got married like a month ago. And so you know, I feel like this last year has just been honestly like the most rock solid ever. And I honestly think, I mean, it can't be a coincidence that that's kind of when I stopped caring about, like stopped caring about, you know, what others thought of the content that I was putting out. And we've been like, and also this is one thing I'm gonna be so transparent with this. I used to not post him that much because every time I'd post him, I'd lose followers. So like in that kind of toxic period where I was so worried about everything, I was like, okay. You right, get- because guys didn't probably like the idea that yeah. you weren't single or, or what. And so what I've kind of noticed is, because I gain a lot of followers a week, but I lose some a week, is I'm kind of like swapping out followers, I feel like. Yeah. So for that two-year period of gaining a lot of, I feel like probably guy followers, because I had a, I still have more guys than girls, but my female ratio has gone like way up over the last year. Um, but I think those guys that were following me for not good reasons are leaving and then I'm getting like more quality followers. I, I think, I mean, that makes sense. It's interesting. Cause you kind of probably have to look at a page that size from a, like a business. Right. Really I do. Good. I mean, it's my, like, obviously Jonathan has a job, so we're a two income household, but this is my income right. is Instagram and right. Facebook. So, and I think that's, you know, nowadays it's a little more normal, but at first it was really weird having to tell people that that was my job. <laughs> Do you think that people, well, I bet like older people because oh, you're they in, still don't get it. You're in such a uh, community, whether it be with the horses, the ranching or the outdoors where it's like the older demographics just like, 
like you make money from what right and <laughs> my gra- it's funny my pap has totally gotten on board now he did not understand it at first but he is like so on board now and he'll come to me with like post ideas or like i think you should look at this company and he's like really cool um about it but other people when they ask me like what do you do when i meet my dad's older friends or whatever i'm a little embarrassed to be really? like because they won't get it and so i feel kind of like i don't know like a so how do you explain it to somebody who doesn't get it? Usually when it's a quick answer, I just say I work in marketing. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, that's basically what I do through social media marketing. Um, but when I tell someone, you know, in depth, I say, you know, I have a following on Instagram and through that I can um, market products for certain companies and certain services, you know, whether it be an outfitter or, you know, whatever. And so that's kind of how I make my living. And when I say that, I mean, they kind of get it and it's, especially younger people do, but it's still like, they can't grasp how someone would make money doing that. Right. Well, I mean, younger people. They do, but like the older demographic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for younger people, it's like, that's like the ideal life though. It's everybody probably in the age of 12 to 35 nowadays. I don't think there's a single person would be like, uh, yeah, I would love and that's to make money to, on Instagram. That's I would what love I try to be to an influencer. Because people, people are a little hateful sometimes. Like, like the, to you directly? Oh, yeah. And they're a little hateful about it. I mean, obviously through social media. They're not in person. They right. never say it in person. But, you know, they really get mad at me about it. And they're like, get a real job. And I'm like, okay, let me break it down. You're telling me if someone came to you and said, here, you can do all your passions in life and get paid for it. And that could, like, you'll legit make enough to where that's your job. And you'd say no. Okay. Sounds well, legit. Well, I mean, what's that old saying? <laughs> it's like, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Right. That's like old people like to preach that one. Yeah. And, you know, and I try to like tell people too, because I mean, it does sound like a rather easy job, but if it was easy, everyone would do it. And it, it does take a lot of um, strategy, I'd say. Yeah. And probably creativity, Creativity, right? strategy, and having the, you know uh backdrop i mean even like just like having the lifestyle to do it and not many people can you know i'm, I'm trying to word it i don't even know how to no, word go it, ahead but, speak plain but it's, yeah it's like like not everyone has the cattle and not everyone has the horses and not everyone has the ability to hunt on their own land and then to you know promote that and then go to other states and it's like i was blessed with that my parents 100 percent like put so much of um of that into me and gave me that opportunity and so i'm very blessed on that front but i try to me and jonathan were actually talking about this yesterday there's a difference between spoiled kids and blessed kids spoiled kids take what their parents give them or like whatever they're given and just like like okay like i'm good with that and then blessed kids and i always say this about Stephen mcbee too because you had him on here he is like the hardest hustler I've ever met in my life. Oh, he is the freaking poster child. Super successful parents. Super successful parents. And then he just like took what he was given and was like, I'm going to like make, like I'm going to times this by a hundred and I'm going to just like take it and run with it. And so I feel like with what I was blessed with, I'm like, I need to do something with this. And so that's kind of how it all was born. Right. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, it's it's just so normal to see kids who have it good and they do nothing, right? The amount of kids in my town who are trust fund babies because they're our, our town is like, it was all farms, and then all of a sudden everyone wanted to live there, so there's a whole lot of rich granddaddies. And, from selling their yeah, land from selling developers. Land and, stuff. Yeah. and the amount of trust fund babies I know that have squandered it, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's pretty common, though, because you'll see that, like, even in – as silly and cliches, it sounds like Hollywood. You'll see a lot of Hollywood producers, actors, so on, and you never hear about their kids. Right. Because well, of it's that like very They may reason. just be chilling because they don't have to really get in the spotlight, but yeah, at the same time. Yeah, which I get that too. Yeah, but uh, my, my main thing is, while I'm not doing a conventional job, because I have worked in an office. I've worked, like, I used to work in our barn every day where, you know, I'd get there and feed and clean you know, 20 stalls and, you know, do that. That was a job at one point and worked in a restaurant a little bit. But after all of that experience, then it was like, I know this isn't conventional, but I think with what, like me talking to my parents, I'm like, I think with what y'all blessed me with, like this 
like raising me around horses and raising me on this farm, I think I can make something cool out of it. And I think that this is like a really neat path that even if Instagram got deleted tomorrow, I wouldn't regret, regret taking. Right. Like I'm, I'm a hundred percent satisfied with the life that has been like handed to me over this last year. Like it's last years. I mean, three years, we've gotten to do so many things that we wouldn't have gotten to do without Instagram and Facebook. And I think that's so weird to like come out of my mouth, but it's true. Yeah. I mean, it's super interesting. And I mean, it's gotta be exciting. I kind of want to go way back though and talk about your upbringing, like Mm -hmm. your folks, the, you know, the place you grew up on. I mean, give, kind of give the whole lowdown on, on what that is, where you came from, what your parents do, and, and okay. really how you got that start right. to get to where, you know, where we're talking right now. So, uh, my parents actually met barrel racing. They were barrel racers. And your dad was a barrel racer? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, so that's so funny because I don't mean to cut you off, but. It's not a dude sport. <laughs> well, no, my dad is a barrel horse trainer. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of like the I mean, especially in the West, he's like Mm -hmm. one of the most prominent male barrel horse trainers, but you go to where you guys are. And this is what I always tell people because in Texas, it's like you got calf ropers, team ropers. I mean, I don't barrel race. I've always roped and love roping, but it's like, man, don't barrel race. I was like, I I don't think you've been to the East. Well, well, that's because I feel like y'all just go by like the NFR and like rodeo type things because it is a women's sport in most rodeos. Yeah. I mean, the WPRA is, but. We lived in North Carolina. Both my parents are both barrel horse trainers, and they both trained barrel horses mm-hmm. in North Carolina when I was a little kid. I And I used to date, like, a male barrel race trainer. Like, I mean, it's because I show in the AQHA, and so there's tons of, you know, gigantic faturities and sweepstakes and things like that. And it's like there's tons of guys that pull bend in barrel race. But um, they act – so, yeah, they met barrel racing, and um, my dad's a little bit younger than my mom, so she blew him off and was like, no, you're a baby. And he just, like, wouldn't leave her alone. Like, how much and, younger? Uh, she does not want me to tell you that. But Just uh, say how much younger. You don't say their age. Uh, seven years. Six oh, and that, half, I mean, that's not years, crazy. Like that. um, Unless you're, like, 18 and you're going seven. You don't got a problem. But, but. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so he was 17, and um, they met, and she wouldn't date him until he was – like 20, I think oh, he really? just like, they were friends and he just like, wouldn't leave her alone. She said she had dates come to like our local saddle club to watch her. And he would like run them off. Yeah. And so he just like was infatuated with her for forever. So then they, you know, got married and things like that. And they always had, you know, a slew of barrel horses. He liked poles better. Like he had a really good pole horse. And then, mm. Um, you know, they got their first farm, they had a bed and breakfast, they had me, and then we moved from that farm to, um, the one that we're at now. So did they quit training barrel horses? They never trained. They just were, you know, amateurs that like showed. So, oh, um, so they, they ran barrels at the HHA shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, more like they did rodeos and they did like saddle club stuff. Um, and then my mom has a really bad back. And so she was like, I can't do barrel racing anymore. It's too hard on me but i think i can get into the more like western pleasure and things like that aspect of it and still get to do horses and you know that so that's why i grew up both barrel racing and doing the aqha stuff like yeah see um, that's something i don't i don't know a lot about western pleasure or i mean i didn't know nothing about so i'm not necessarily like a western pleasure rider i do have pleasure babies coming up right now that we're going to send to like a futurity trainer but I do what's called the all around now. So it's, you know, horsemanship, equitation, showmanship, trail, Western riding, all different things that are either based on you or it's based on your horse or, um, or sometimes you're on the ground doing showmanship and halter. And so the like goal of it is to go to a show, have one horse, do the most and be the best at the most. So like there will be an all around winner at the end of it. And so that's like what I like doing. I like to do it all. So I do both English and Western on the same horse and try to, you know, not, it's like at the big shows, I may be top five in everything instead of winning a class, but then I'll win the all around. So that's like, so that's the goal for me. I like to do like be a little jack of all trades. Yeah. That's so interesting because it's with horses, there's so much diversity in the horse industry. Especially the quarter horse. It can do anything. Especially the quarter horse. (laughs) It can do anything. If you look at like an AQHA show, I mean, 
It has everything. Ha- especially the big ones. Small ones, sometimes you go to and they won't have everything. But when you go to Congress, you know, they start out with the, you know, heading healing, the roping, the um, reining, and then they go into the, like, all around aspects of it with the Hunter Under Saddle, Western Pleasure, you know, all that stuff that I just said. And then they do the jumping stuff. And then they have the barrel racing, the pole bending. I mean, they do everything. Yeah, I mean, the Quarter Horse Congress has been a huge thing on the East Coast forever. Like, that's yeah. one of the big destinations. But it's just funny because when you rodeo, you don't look at the, you don't look at the other stuff, right. right? In fact, rodeo people sometimes, I bet most of them are just like me. I don't really know much about that. Right. right? Why it's, that's why it's important <clears throat> to have people who represent the Western lifestyle in other aspects besides rodeo. Right. Which is what's great about you because you do all that with horses – cattle and then you have this huge outdoorsman thing and they're all kind of parallel right Right. it all goes together it's the same quality of people and the amount of girls mostly girls i I think there's probably been a couple guys here and there that have said it but the amount of girls that followed me for the makeup and horses aspect of my instagram and then they said i went and bought a bow and i've been shooting it i don't know if i'm gonna hunt with it yet but i went and bought a bow it's like it's this. It's such a cool feeling to bring people into the hunting world that would have never even thought about it. And so that's like a big goal for me too. And, you know, lately it's been a lot about horses right now for me because I'm trying to get my junior horse ready and things like that. And so I, I messaged one of the companies that I work with that is like a hunting company. And I said, you know, I feel bad that I haven't been posting as much hunting stuff right now. But, um, you know, I really do think that I can bring – a whole different demographic into this world and they're like oh we see it they're like we we've definitely seen it and you know keep doing it and so i think that's something that is lacking is like bringing different demographics into the hunting world because it is such a small world yeah but it, it's crazy how much it's grown and i think it's for sure okay, let's be real you got to look at like the joe rogan's and the cameron haynes of the oh, world yeah. and be like those two guys in themselves have done more for the for sure. growth of hunting as a cultural for thing sure. than anybody you know God, i think they had cameron haynes like bow hunting in gq magazine who would oh, think yeah. i mean gq is so far left right? that you can't even read it anymore but they bring a dude like that and have him shoot a bow in there i mean that's actually cool i know and then meat eater you know like that has because it's on netflix and then he's oh, got steven ranella yeah, yeah i mean it's been a big thing too you know showing that like yeah we're not just killing them like <laughs> Everything. Yeah, I mean, that's been the thing, though, until it's crazy that one guy and anybody who podcasters is going to reference Joe Rogan forever. Right. I mean, hell, I think we copied his microphones. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's crazy that he, in a way, almost saved that, right? Just by making it cool. Right. And bringing people like Stephen Ranella on and the Remy Warrens of the world and right. Cameron Haynes, who's now just superstar level himself. Right. It's made it better and and i feel like that's and i am not ever putting myself on their level but on the women's side of things right that's kind of what i try to do because you know more more and more women are coming into the sport and into the lifestyle of hunting but at the same time they get so much hate and for being fake for being quote unquote fake even if they aren't because like, okay, so I went on an evening hunt and left my makeup on. So that makes me fake. Okay. But, you know, it's like I try to not mold myself into what they want me to be because that's like defeating the purpose for other women. It's like, no, you can go do it however you want. I'm not advocating necessarily for only the women who want to go wear makeup. I'm advocating for the women that want to be in the outdoors and do it their own way. Right. And it's like... You know, say even all the money is gone, say all of the everything else is gone. If I can like make women feel more confident going into a predominantly male category of like life and sport, then like, all right, then it's worth it. I mean, that may, I mean, that's absolutely, you know, the more inclusion in anything and the more ambassadors you have, whether it be like a rodeo or hunting you have to have people from tons of different backgrounds coming into it, doing it in tons of different ways right. to grow it, to make it flourish, to make it not be stagnant. And it, right. it's funny because that's that's why we like to have outdoors people on because there's a lot of parallels because it's mm-hmm. a small subculture just like rodeo, 
but it requires the same attention to grow the sports. Right. And, and what kills me is that, I mean, I've had industry men just come after me and just not know me, not know anything about me, but because they took a look at me or because, I mean, there's like hunting hate pages and they'll like, you know, post about people and just like make fun of them and stuff. And it's like, okay, so you made up your mind about me after like two seconds. And so now you're going to come and write me this novel and tell me how horrible I am for the hunting industry because I wear makeup and because I'm not a hardcore only hunter. Like that's all I do. Like, no, I've got other passions. I've got other things. And it's like, you're the one who complains about the hunting industry, not flourishing, like, you know, money wise, but then you're like shutting people off because they're not doing it your way. That's right. not how that works. No, not at all. I mean, that's, that compl- it doesn't even make sense if you yeah. actually voice it. But yeah, you know, it's funny because the model for hunting is what? The same type of TV shows, right? Right. All the trade shows, you mm-hmm. know, the, the convention center, outdoor expos. Right. And that's like the thing, right? right? It's like they try to push products and experiences and safaris and hunts at these expos. And then you have the few networks who do televised stuff. But if you watch one, you could probably watch all of them. Right. And, you know, it's, it, it's a tough industry to probably grow. Right. And, but, and so I, I do think there is like room for more women to come in and say like, Hey, you don't have to be a hardcore hunter that doesn't shower for 10 days and goes on this elk hunt and packs it out all by themselves. And, you know, you don't have to be that if you don't want to be. If you want to do that, like, go do it, girl. But at the same time, you can be, like, the weekend hunter who wants to look cute with her kill picture so she puts on some eyeliner. You can be that. Like, there's room for all of it. And I think that, you know, not as many people have that outlook on it. I think, and I think a lot of girls get defensive. And I've seen this on Instagram. And I'll, like, DM people and be like, look, like, you don't have to be this defensive. I, like, uh one of the companies I work with posted a picture of me the other day with uh, an archery buck that I had and a girl commented being like, no real hunter would wear that much makeup. And I'm like, it really hindered me obviously in like this harvest. But at the same time, I'm like, we get enough hate from dudes. (laughs) Do you really have to like try to be like the bro and come in here and do this? Like, no, like guys aren't looking at this and thinking you're cool. You look like the mean girl, right? Like, Lift everyone else up. Just because you don't like wearing makeup, that's fine. But I do. And, I mean, we're doing the same thing. It's not it's not anything to be hateful over. <laughs> yeah, people, though, they, they have their own preconceived notions on how people should be. And usually those preconceived notions are based on the way that they are. And I think it's such a common thing for boyfriends or dads or whatever. Be like, get that makeup off your face. You can't come hunting with me like that. The deer will smell it. And I'm like, oh, whatever. They're going to smell your 200 pounds of BO way before they smell my <laughs> eyeliner, okay? But Does eyeliner like, actually have a smell? Like, well, you can get stuff that's, like, not really scented. But it's, like, it's barely anything. To like, I mean, you can get no fragrant stuff. And so, you know, to me, I'm like, those girls that are like that have probably, you know, gone through that before with either a spouse or a dad or somebody, you know, being like, you can't do it this way. And then they have it stuck in their brain that way. And because they've gone through it, they're like, you can't, you can't wear makeup. Isn't it funny (laughs) how, how people are like, they, people are so against diversity in the thing like they may like it if it's not their thing like oh they want the nfl to be diverse they want the nba to be diverse but if it's their thing right if it's the thing that they're fixated on and somebody comes at it with a little bit different rhythm right and shakes up their mindset people go psycho Uh, yeah (laughs) they do i do not know why i wish i was a psychologist and i understood people better i yeah i do too i try to I try for for so long, I tried to be diplomatic and, you know, be like, you know, have conversations with them. And there's so many people that are just hateful on the internet that at this point, I'm just like, unfollow me. I'm gonna block you then. Like, stop saying that stuff. I don't Mm -hmm. have time for you anymore. Like at this point, like I used to try to like talk to people and it would just consume me. And at this point it's like, haters are going to hate. They're very brave behind their phone and they would never say it to my face. So I'm just going to not let it bother me. Right. As much as it possible. It still happens sometimes, but. Bailey's House of Guns is a family-owned and operated business based out of Houston, Texas. Look, these guys have supplied 
law enforcement throughout the state of Texas for years. They also provide lots of great options for hunters. Benelli Shotguns, Weatherby, to name a few. They've got great brands, guys. They've been in the business since 1970. They're a well-known sponsor of rodeo and supporters of rodeo. They sponsor rodeo athletes. They've given guns and ammo to lots of world champions, NFR champions, you name it. Give them a call, 713-433-2475 for more details. Guys, they can ship guns and ammo to FFLs throughout the United States. They support law enforcement. I bet you support law enforcement. Support a local business here in Texas and a United States-based company that can supply you with the guns and ammo I know you want. But, I mean, you got to think most things are probably rooted in some form of envy or jealousy or... And that's the thing. And I hate being the one to be like, you're just jealous. Like, no one wants to be told that. And, like, it makes you sound kind of bad, too. So... I try to just keep that on the inside, but like, yeah, I mean, anyone who's coming on your page that has the same passion as you and sees that you are able to make a living out of it or, you know, do cooler things than they've gotten to do, like, yeah, they're going to be jealous. Like I get jealous. I mean, there's tons of jealousy on Instagram. And the thing you have to realize too, is a lot of it is posed, faked, edited. I mean, no, absolutely. I mean, it truly is. That's the funny thing about social media and everybody probably knows this but our little tiny human brains are so fragile (laughs) our little egos they just can't handle a lot and and you find this if you're someone who can be really self-reflective you find it in yourself and it's not you probably figured this out really easily i know it's something i figured out but if you can call yourself on your bullshit right what you have to understand is most people never get there I have a a friend who like studies psychology and sometimes I'll call her and be like, am I allowed to think this way? (laughs) I'll be like, I'll be like, Hey, I have a question. I feel like my brain's a little like wonky right now. And I'm probably thinking of this wrong. Can you like tell me if this is okay or not? And she'll be like, you probably need to step back (laughs) and like take a look at this. But, uh, like, I think it's important to like have those accountability partners, like my husband, my best friend, that kind of thing. Cause sometimes, and especially with a social media following with social media in general, not even a following, you can kind of get too into yourself and you can get too focused on things that don't really matter and things like that. And so it's good to have people to like check you. (laughs) Yeah. If you allow them to check you, I mean, I know, it's really hard to be checked sometimes. It is. And, you know, it's it's sometimes hard to swallow. But, you know, like I said, when I, like, kind of looked at myself and was like, my family and friends are not liking me right now. It's like, that's when I had to step back. It didn't, it didn't like, immediately happen, though. Mm-hmm. Like, it took a little bit. Right. But. Lots of fights, probably. Lots of getting annoyed with them for being annoyed with me. Yeah, like, how dare you? Well, I'm just like, you know. And, and it was kind of having to find that balance because with any work, you have a balance of your real life and your work life. And so Jonathan's like, I come home and I'm not working. Like you need to not be working sometimes because all my phone was working. Checking my DMs was working. Checking my emails was working. Looking at my posts to make sure it had enough you know, likes and impressions and everything was working. And so then it's like, he's like, you need to take time to where you're not doing that he's like you are doing that 23 hours a day like stop so this is something i can relate to it uh you know you get obsessed and so it didn't happen immediately but having him there to check me and my parents and my best friends to just be like hey you know we're not necessarily like loving being around you right now (laughs) it's like an intervention but there's no crack right and it was like yeah it was social crack yeah yeah it's actually probably more dangerous because it is scary how addicting like you get that report on your phone like oh your uh screen view is up 30 percent. you are averaging six hours a day on your phone right what the that is a lot of time and my screen time has gone down so i don't even know what it's at right now but it's gone down so much now that i've started getting back into like the showing and Mm -hmm. stuff like that because i'm in the barn like all day long so i'm not on right. my phone anymore so that's great i mean it goes way up during deer season i'm on my phone a little bit in the deer stand really yeah oh, you have to because it gets a little boring yeah deer stand hunting is a different thing i'm from colorado so right. it's like tie your boots tight you're gonna walk 40 freaking miles right and that's kind of like us with turkey hunting like turkey hunting is kind of like eastern elk hunting but mm-hmm. it's um 
you know, just like a lower scale elk hunting, you're still calling and, you know, running and gunning and stuff like that. But deer hunting, it's a little more strategy of like where I need to be to be there for the right time. Like, you know, that kind of thing. So sometimes when you're in a box blind and you got the windows all buttoned up and it's warm, just sit there and check the old Facebook. Yeah. I mean, if you're in an area <laughs> where there's cell service, that's the funny thing about the Rocky mountain range in Colorado. It's like, I do a lot of, a lot of fly fishing when I'm there and it would be nice to post it on Instagram, but I right. don't have cell phone service to do it anyway. No, when so. I was, when I was in Colorado, uh, filming for that show and doing yeah. fly fishing and we were, we were doing all kinds of stuff. I was roping and doing all that. Excuse me. I had to wait like two days to post it. Was everything. that a burp? It was, I burped, but I hit it. I could have let it out, but I didn't. You know, so. what's funny is like, it was like a burp, but it almost sounded like you almost threw up because you're trying to hold it in. You're yeah. Like, uh, it probably wasn't pretty at all since there's a microphone, like two like inches from my face. Yeah. The microphone but is so sensitive. It could catch the sound. Yeah. The and throat. sometimes just like beware. Cause we'll be talking for a while. Sometimes they make like frog noises and it just like comes out of the throat. Frog noises. Yeah. It just, it's involuntary. And like what? I can't do it. Demo it. I can't though. Like it's, it's involuntary and I can't do it, but I can't stop it. So <laughs> <laughs> if it happens, were you were born with that. It just has always happened. You know, I don't, I thought it was normal, but apparently not. <laughs> so have you met another person who also frogs? Uh, I watched this ASMR chick who like eats cause I've been on a diet. So I watch people eat. <laughs> she does it sometimes. Really? Yeah. It's like a croak in the back of your throat. Yeah. <laughs> I actually know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe I do it too. Uh, yeah. I've always been like, what if that was just my job? Where like, if I didn't get fat so easily, I would totally do that. Cause I'd just eat like Chick-fil-A and <laughs> like, I don't know, other crunchy goodness on camera. And that'd be my job. Are you eating Chick-fil-A on your diet? No. Like just the grilled nuggets? No, I, I've done that once on this. So I like, do that a lot. When I was in college and I was like a fitness freak, I would go to the Chick-fil-A on campus and they like knew my order. Cause I was getting two chicken breasts. Because they didn't have the grilled nuggets. They just had the, like, sandwiches. And they would just hand me, like, the two chicken breasts. You know what I do all the time? Like, I'll get, like, in the morning. <laughs> the breakfast is underrated. Uh, is the they have the egg, the egg white grill. So I order that. But just the egg white and the chicken breast. The hardest part is, like, not taking the, what is it, the little hash brown things they've got in the morning. Or, like, if I'm running behind, I'll go... And I'll get there like they have a 12 count grilled nugget oh and like gosh. an unsweet iced tea. But I'm telling you, it's the biggest emotional struggle to not order the large French fries with it. No, it's n that's not even my struggle. I want to eat three sandwiches. Like their sandwiches, their fried chicken sandwiches are they like they have cocaine in them. The I don't know what ever. it is. And I have not. I've been on this diet for 40 days. I've lost 20 pounds. Like feel free to clap because that's awesome. But at the same time. I'm like dying inside because I really want something fried. I really want some, I really want Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is like my crack. Uh, I like have an issue with it. And so we've made a deal to where I can only drink it if I spill blood. So I can only drink it if I kill something. So that's like my reward. Oh, so you're not just like cutting yourself real quick to have a Mountain Dew? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. So yeah, I got to kill something. It's not just spill blood. It's... <laughs> <laughs> you have to like end glad life. you elaborated on that because yeah, I'm I just like, hey, life. let me check your wrist real quick, Katie. <laughs> you had a Mountain Dew in the truck. Uh, no, I did not. No, you didn't. Don't <laughs> lead people to think that. But um, I haven't had one in 40 days. Uh, it's been awful. But at the same time, so I'm not like today's the last day of the diet, actually. So I'm allowed to cheat tomorrow. Okay, so wait, today's the last day, or, or no, today's so the day, first day that this today's the first day that I can cheat. But I'm gonna try not to because All I'm right, already. So Tex-Mex? I'm already having trouble fitting into my show clothes. Um, so I need to show this weekend. So I was going to wait till after the show to go have like waffles or something. Oh, I was going to say, we, we can go get Tex-Mex after this, but you could do like we can, keto Tex-Mex. We can do whatever. It doesn't matter. I love like Mexican food, but like literally lately on this diet, I've been going to the Mexican uh, place like that's two minutes from my house and just getting a side of grilled chicken. And it's literally a thing this big of grilled chicken. And it's awesome. So, okay, so where did you get this, like, meat, vegetable-only diet? Well, there's a place in Nashville, and I went to it. Okay, it's funny. So when Instagram started, that's the diet that I did because I had gotten a little thick, and I was like, mm, this needs to stop. And it's what's funny is when I started that first diet, I was way less than I do right now. So we're having to, you know, step back from the food. Um, but now, so I did it again, 
and it's just kind of like a um, like a metabolic reset because you like do really lean meat, veggies, but only certain veggies, and then fruit, and it's no butter, no oil, because they want like you to burn your fat instead of the fat in the food and your oil and your you know that kind of thing. So it sucks. Uh, you know it's interesting because. When they advise you on diets, like the new trend is keto. Right. Right. But if you're doing just meat and vegetables, I mean, I guess you're getting carbs from the vegetables, but. Well, I, mean, I eat like apples and stuff too. So there's still carbs. really a low carb diet and a low fat diet. Like, do, do you like get brain fog from all that and stuff? Cause um, normally. At first I did. And you have supplements too with it. So that's the thing is like, they <clears> give, <throat> they give you some stuff to kind of help you through that. Um, but I, because I, they were like, okay, you can't work out on this. And I was like, um, I work in the barn, like hours and hours a day like even if i'm just out there it's 100 degrees i'm gonna be well that makes sense you can't work out because you I, don't have right you don't have enough to you don't fuel. have glycogen from carbs or ketones R from right yeah, so you have no energy source right. basically if it's just high protein and so i've been eating more than they told me to because i have to like i'm in the barn riding all day and like working horses all day like i have to but i still lost 20 pounds in 40 days so I mean, it works. It works. <clears throat> it's supposed to, okay, it's supposed to, like, help your metabolism to where when you start introducing healthy fats and carbs back into your diet, you metabolize them better. Really? Yeah. So hmm. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's interesting how many different diet trends right. there are. But, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that their big thing is just, like, just being a calorie deficit and you'll probably be all right. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, like, so... That's the thing is I, I feel like once I get into a groove, I'm really good about like, you know, staying within a certain calorie, being good most of the time and like having a good balance. But it's like, I get off the wagon sometimes and then it's like real hard to come back. Really? Yeah. Would you ever try the carnivore diet thing? Have you seen that? I could totally do it. Really? I'm a meat eater. It's like, I'm really picky about pretty much everything but meat. I will eat any type of meat you set in front of me. And, but like, as far as anything else, I am picky. Really? Yeah. Like like five year old picky. There's nothing pickier than a five year old. Like, like I, mac and cheese and hot dogs only. Okay, but the I hot dogs custom have to be cut a certain way. I custom requested at my wedding to have bacon mac and cheese. <laughs> bacon mac and cheese? Yes. But it only could be easy mac and it can only be no, microwave bacon. No, no, I'm not that picky. Like it can be like some good thick bacon and some like, you know, kind of like gourmet ish. Fancy cheese. Fancy cheese. But uh, like shells and cheese, Velveeta, it's my stuff. Yeah, I think that's been linked to like ass cancer or something. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe don't do that one. Probably. It's funny. So we were kind of talking about like fake, fake in the hunting industry. Right. Mostly regarding the Instagram women. And you're not that. You're not fake. You truly love it. You truly do it. But I mean, how did you get started like with... Like passion, you, well, yeah, but like to having the passion for it because lots of people hunt or have hunt, right. you know, been hunting, but you're like psychotically passionate about hunting. And it's kind of hard because I have two psychotic passions, so it's kind of hard to like balance them. But so there for a while hunting, while I still did it, took a, a back seat to the horses because when my parents were putting that much money into it and I'm putting that much time into it, missing that much school for it, like going for titles, going for like training for the world show, you kind of have to make that your number one. And so uh, while I would hunt during rifle season and, you know, that kind of thing, I wasn't bow hunting and I wasn't going out of state that much and that kind of thing. So um, it did kind of take a second, like a backseat to horses there for a while. Um, but it's always been there. I started hunting with my dad, like, early like I, I i didn't kill a deer till i was 10 but i dove hunted like from the time i could throw a 410 up and i um you know i started going hunting with him as early as i mean i think i started going when i was three or four with him like so your dad loved hunting oh he still loves it's well he's kind of like obsessed with his cows right now so he like you know he's always been kind of the ex obsessive hunter and my mom said he was like die hard when they were married and went before me and stuff like that and so she's like i didn't see him during hunting season but now that he's you know he he enjoys going hunting and seeing the wildlife now more so than actually 
killing. Like he likes to go and he likes to grow the deer. He likes to do the food plots. He likes to, which I help him with all that and stuff, but he enjoys cultivating land and he enjoys growing his cattle and, you know, improving the genes in his herd. And like, he's way more zoned in on that right now than hunting. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah I mean, you really, if you want to be successful in the cattle business, you have to be. Right. And obsessive. it's not a giant cattle. Like we don't have a gigantic herd, but he has very high quality, um, you know, cattle. Like, I mean, we sent, uh, I think eight bulls to a big sale in Missouri, um, every year for the last few years. We didn't this year, but a couple years ago, we had the highest selling bull um, at that whole sale out of, I think, like over 100. And I mean, he he enjoys uh, doing that. And he like, you know, partners up with other breeders and does all kinds of stuff. He's, you know, we only have about 80 cows, you know, but we um, are constantly like, you know, doing embryo transfers with better ones and, you know, like trying to better our herd, even though it's kind of small. So, right. Yeah, I mean, is it hard to acquire more land being that you're so oh close to Nashville? Oh my gosh, and it's so rocky. So there's land around us, but it's going for about 100,000 an acre right now. So It's impossible. It's then. impossible. I mean, it's crazy. And so, you know, we've had our land for, if we moved there when I was a year. So, I mean, 23 years. And so we have a little over 300, but all the land around us is like rock. I mean, there's a, there's so one farm. You can't farm. graze cattle on the land there, really. You can. We have a lot of greenery, but, like, it's just, like, shelf rock. I mean, it's, we, we had to do a lot of work in order to, like, get a lot of the rock out and whatnot. I mean, our house, I mean, I don't live with my parents anymore, but I say our house because I moved out, like, a year ago. But it's literally blasted into the side of a hill, and it's just a gigantic rock bluff behind the house because it's so rocky. Wow. So there is a farm next door to us. They run cattle and stuff too. Not as many. So there is grazing fields there. But I mean, like I said, it's too expensive to even try to buy it. I mean, I think they sold it to Publix or something like that for like 200 an acre. I mean, it's crazy. That's insanity. You know what? I mean, people come to Texas because they think it's going to be cheaper than like, I'm from Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. Colorado is wildly expensive. Right. But if you're anywhere near like the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, it's just like what you're talking about. Where I live, right. it's just just east of Decatur, which is a big cowboy town here. But it's literally a hundred thousand an acre, it's, and the property taxes are like my property the taxes roof. are like three times what my parents' farm is. Because I mean, they have you know cattle and things like that, yeah. so they get the write off. But I mean, I live on a quarter of an acre, right? <laughs> so I mean, it's like I mean, I think it's like four grand a year. Oh wow! See, that would be cheap here. Really? Okay. Yeah, like if let's let's say you had a half a million dollar house in the area where I live, it'd be like thirteen hundred a month. Jeez! It's insanity. The oh, property wow. taxes here. Yeah, that's not that bad. So no, no. So you have to be very better. careful where you. I mean, because if you think about it, the area it's called Keller South Lake. This this zone, like, you can't afford much because right. your property taxes are a second mortgage. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy what property costs nowadays. I mean, even with ours, like we plan ahead of time to like set that aside, you know, right. so that we're not like, oh, right at the end of the year, like crap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. you almost have to pay it monthly with your mortgage or else you just it screw right. yourself. Still though. So like you were mentioning all the opportunities that have opened up for you in the hunting world, the things you've gotten to do. I mean, what are some of the, like the really unique hunts you've gotten to go on that, Yo, Instagram opened up for you. Yeah, so I hadn't really, I mean, I had hunted out of state a little bit before the whole Instagram thing, but it really allowed me because A, it happened at a time where my all around horse that I'd shown all throughout youth and like my early amateur years had passed away and then I had young horses. And so I wasn't showing as much. And so I was like, you know, like, let me take this time to like really like adventure into things I've always wanted to do. And so I started turkey hunting. I hadn't turkey hunted before because the spring is like horse show season, you know, like I'm gone all the time. And so started turkey hunting at home, but then I went, you know, out of state to turkey hunt some too. I, I love going out of state and hunting with other people and learning from them. You can learn something from literally everyone. And so, um, that's been a big thing too. I think that's like one thing that 
I liked about going with outfitters sometimes is because while I'm very comfortable whitetail hunting, I'm not comfortable elk hunting by myself. That was my first elk hunt a little while ago or bear hunting or goose hunting or, you know, whatever. I'd never done it. And so I loved going on those hunts, even if it was with outfitters or with friends who knew what they were doing, because I got to, you know, learn about it and, you know, add to my knowledge. And so, yeah, I got to be on a couple of TV shows for waterfowl hunting with snow geese. And that was like so much fun. I love snow snow goose hunting is crazy. Snow goose hunting is one of my favorites. Haven't got to do it in a lot, like a while, but it was crazy. I had a blast doing that. Like me and Jonathan. Take the plug out of your gun, 12 rounds. Gosh, it's so much fun. It's nuts. And, uh, and I haven't even been on a wild one. They were both the, both that I went on that year were kind of like chilled out ones like the the juvies had gotten a little you know educated and they weren't coming in quite as well so i mean we weren't even on crazy ones and it was still a blast and then you know um last year in 2019 i got my first elk which was awesome and i got my first black bear and we're going on an antelope hunt this year where at nebraska nebraska in a month yeah uh archery and so we're gonna try to do that and getting to go other place and whitetail hunt just because you know, while I may know how to hunt my property, it's so different going to other ones and like seeing how other people, um, you know, attack a hunt where they're like, okay, this is how I'm going to approach it. And I'm like, I would have done that different, but this is really cool. Cause you know, your area and you know, you know, deer and other areas are just so different from the ones at home. And so it's, it's been a really neat, you know, thing, even just from like an educational standpoint of getting to, you know, just experience other things it's been really cool yeah i mean do you have any you know you went on the elk hunt bear hunt in canada but i mean what other like out of okay everybody's hunts are canceled pretty right. much thanks to covid i mean we have a mutual i have friend. some hunts that i'm hoping don't get canceled all my turkey hunts got canceled but yeah. we're still hoping to go to kansas because i drew for kansas this year so i'm really excited about that um so we're going to kansas illinois EB back to Texas. Um, that's a big maybe though. And then we're going to Nebraska for antelope. So yeah. So nothing out of country this year. No, nothing out of country. Um, I was going to talk to a guy about like maybe doing moose in the Yukon, but then that kind of got a little fizzled out. Right. So, well, I mean, yeah, we have a mutual friend, Steven and and he had like out of like Africa type hunts that got canceled. So yeah, I wonder if he got his deposits back. I don't feel bad for him. (laughs) <laughs> now what is it with the beef <laughs> there's so much beef there no he's the type of friend where like we're always mean to each other but then i called him the other day and was like if you're not at my wedding in a month because you're elk hunting i will kill you <laughs> like so it's like there's a love there yeah but like we're just mean to each other right no i mean you gotta have that. and it's like like it was funny when he because he's the one that introduced us so when he introduced us through text he was like this is probably the only time i've ever complimented her so i know that was so funny yeah yeah actually i think he's gonna be disappointed because i haven't been mean to you yet i guess what what kind of i mean you saw a little bit we were going back and forth in the instagram comments today i mean that's that's normal yeah, he he tagged me in it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have seen it. Sometimes he uh, he'll comment things that are so mean, and people don't know we're friends, and they'll start defending me underneath really? it. Really? Oh, that's great. And I'm like, guys, he's my friend. It's fine. <laughs> no, that's great. He's so funny. Yeah, he's a great speaker. He tells good stories too. He does. He's very well spoken. Um, sorry, I didn't say that. He sucks. But uh, <laughs> yeah, what's his Instagram? At Stephen McBee. Yeah. Go hit on all him. all the girls. Love him. He's a little. He's a little beef nugget. A beef nugget? Yeah. Beef nugget? Yeah. I feel like we've heard that somewhere before, Ty. Someone said beef nugget on this I, show. I think you're thinking of beaver nuggets for <laughs> Bucky's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Haley Kinzel. Haley Kinzel and Emily Miller both talked about it. Yeah. Anyway, she doesn't know what Bucky's is. I don't. Not, what? No, we're not getting into that. We're going We're going Bucky's after this. No, we aren't. We don't have time. She's got to get back to the airport. It's a I gas do. station. I'll, I'll tell you more well, after Well, it's like show. when I went to the Midwest and it was like, Everyone was talking about like, I'm just going to get something from Casey's. And I'm like, who's Casey? And they were like, oh my gosh, Katie. (laughs) Well, it's so funny because like, if you live in Colorado, it's King Supers, but here it's Kroger where you're at. It's Publix, right? We have Kroger too. Really? What's Publix and that might be safe. We we have have Publix and we have Kroger. We used to have Piggly Wiggly. We've stepped up I remember Piggly Wiggly because we live in North Carolina as a little kid and it was like. We've stepped up from Piggly Wiggly. Y'all go to the Piggly Wiggly. And then, like, so we go to Alabama a lot to a, a lake down there. And over there is the food lion. The food lion? The food lion. I do recognize that one. Yeah. You know that one, Ty? 
I recognize it. It's like a win. I mean, it's like but on the I'm, same level as like a Win Dixie. Is Win Dixie still a thing? I don't know, but I'm just saying it's like a very podunk old grocery store. Uh, see, I'm not. I'm like a Central Market Whole Foods kind of guy. Uh, I don't do that. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, I like the clean shit. Uh, I don't. Uh, I honestly don't know anything that you guys are saying besides the Whole Foods. That's all I've got. You don't know about Central Market. I know. I think I, I recognize Central Market, but I don't okay. know anything that you said. Really, I, I thought Publix was everywhere. No, no, there's no Publix here. I only know Publix because Publix 12, 12 is like ranches in Publix Florida. is known for being better than Kroger, like a little higher end, like a smidge higher end. All right, do you guys know H E B? No. All right, so that's a Texas thing. That's more like Central South Texas, though. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the frog thing? No, that was him. That wasn't me. No, I did that. Oh, you did that. Yeah, I swallowed my drink, but I did it really obnoxiously loud. <laughs> I thought that was him. To just show disinterest in the wow. grocery store talk at this okay. point. You were the one that was in it. I just jumped I in. I know. With my own that none I'm, of you guys know of. No. No, actually, you know what? There's there's this thing called ranch water that someone just told me about. What? It, yeah, it's called ranch water. It's like a, what's that The thing that all the white girls drink? Seltzer? The, yeah, but what's the white claw? Yes, it's like that, but it's called ranch water, so it's like more ranchy. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, someone was telling me about it, and I was like, "Well, where do you get it? That'd be a good thing for us to have here." And they're like, "H E B." I was like, "What's that? You just told me it's a grocery store." Interesting. H E B. I was I've like, never, "Maybe it's a hardware store." <laughs> I've never drank white claw, so I'm gonna try to not to to not be basic. I, I have never drank any type of seltzer before. I'm not a big drinker, so. Yeah, I know. You're like one of two people who hasn't drank on the show. It makes me uncomfortable when people don't well, drink the free I can, alcohol. Well, I already am an open book. And so with alcohol, even though I don't drink very much anyway, it just makes it worse. And I probably would have said some stuff I shouldn't have. Like so, what? I don't know. Oh, come on. That's the best part of the show. You're going to make us lose ratings if you don't like, say stuff. Like every now and then, like I have a glass of wine or something like that. But like, I'm not a, I'm not a drinker. Mm. I don't really either. Probably for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Might get all more infatuated with yourself on Instagram if you drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> Overinflation of oneself. <laughs> no, I think I, I, I already kind of, I don't know. I, I always tell people, because I was in like the alcoholic girl sorority and I didn't drink. It was weird. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it was Wait, they weird, let you stay? It was a weird time. I was a legacy, so it was like a weird thing. But uh. anyway, it, uh, so when I was there though, I was like, I don't have to drink to be a good time. Like it's fine. So me and Jonathan actually went to one of our parties and won a 72 team beer pong tournament. You and him. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, we could set up, this is like a official beer. I pong haven't table. been practicing. Uh, we used to, cause Jonathan used to live in this like rat hole house with other guys and it was like legit. There was rats everywhere and the floor was sticky. I hated it, but why was it? Well, they just, the it was disgusting. It like, Probably I don't know. shouldn't ask just, that question. Just drinks spilled all over the place. Just, yeah. I mean, it was disgusting. They never, there were shower beers in every shower. It was like ridiculous. And so we used to play beer pong legit every night for like a year and a half. <laughs> you know, what's so funny. Uh, Cause we had Amberly Snyder on a couple weeks ago and we had a conversation about beer pong. She's never played beer pong. She played it with water. Well, She's we 29. Play, we play water pong. Like, cause that's disgusting to do in the beer. So like we always do water, but you just have your drink sitting there. Yeah. No, but they drank the water. Oh. There was no beer. <laughs> that's okay. the point I'm trying okay, to make. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. She's like, yeah, I'm 29, and I played beer pong for the first time, but not with beer, with water. No, oh, yeah, generally I, I don't drink, actually, like, when I play beer pong. Jonathan just drinks for me. Mm. Well, that's not right. That's cheating. <laughs> whatever. Beer pong's a kid thing. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so f- we're, we're into cornhole now because we're ancient married people. <laughs> You're into cornhole? <laughs> yeah. Cornhole's like the only sport on ESPN right now. I know. It's Jonathan makes me watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> he like, he's like, look at that like technique. I'm like, oh, Look at the technique. He, he throws like, the sandbag. <laughs> so he just built us a patio out back, uh-huh. and he is so angry because it is like less than half a foot short of regulation cornhole length. And so he like it bothers him so this much. This porch regulation or what? He, he gets so mad about Happy it. Happy Gilmore style. So it... uh. It bothers him. So I try to bring it up as much as possible when people are around so that he has to tell them that, yes, he made our patio too small. For, for cornhole. official cornhole. For official cornhole. Well, does yeah. he have, like, aspirations to be professional? 
And cornhole, no. I, don't know. I mean, he's him and his buddies do. It. Him and his buddies do uh, tournaments sometimes. Like they did tournaments where you do like beer pong, cornhole, and like lawn darts or I don't, not lawn darts, horseshoes or something like that. One okay, time. I gotta be honest. That's like the whitest thing I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. That's, that's like the I couldn't play any other sports, so I'm gonna do the. He was actually a really was he good, a good athlete. He, no, he's a really good. But he athlete. probably has friends who weren't right. And he was like friends with everyone. I really? was so he was like Mr. Popular and I was not. Wait, did you go to high school with him? I went to elementary school and church with him, but then I went to a private school in Nashville. And so mm. I'm his younger brother's age. So I always knew his younger brother and I, we always had mutual friends. But while we were like older, it was weird because people would go from my house to his house, but we would never be in the same vicinity. And mm-hmm. so it was weird because like we have all the same friends, but never like hung out before we were, before I was like 20. So really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But he was, yeah, I was not cool in high school or middle school or the beginning of college. And so, Wait, uh, like not cool. Like, like ha there's like, Katie. She I was smells the, like a deer. I was the weirdo who brought my horse show and deer pictures to school and tried to show everyone. And then I would <sighs> wear, we you had, weren't. I was. I was weird, oh, and no. I would like <laughs> always try to talk about my horses, and people would neigh at me in the hallway, and it was just a fun time. Wait, so you probably love it now because they'd be like, "Oh, I knew her. She's it Instagram famous." It is really famous. funny because I've had people like contact me, like DM me or whatever, and like want to get to them. I'm like, "You were awful to me." Like my entire school experience were you bullied like relentlessly i I wasn't what i i wouldn't like say i was hardcore bullied but like there was definitely people that made me cry there was definitely people that were like like i i definitely was a loner in high school like there was people that i ate lunch with but that was about it like i came home and rode my horses and i was gone a lot of the time and so i never felt like i had a group that i belonged with like at all did you go to a big school no, it was small, which was worse. Cause then it's like, everyone is so clicky and have known each other for years. And like, you know, there's only like maybe a handful of new kids a year or like people that leave. And so, yeah, I, I felt very like alone in high school and middle school, but it's like, okay. Like I'm an only child. Like I kind of was like, okay, whatever. But you know, when I got to college, I did not know how to act. (laughs) I did not know how to dress because I had always had a uniform for school. And so- Was it a religious school? Yeah, it was a Church of Christ school. And so I went to college and it was the same college. So it was, they have K through college at this school. And so when I went to college and I got a new roommate and we became friends, she was like, okay, now that I know you well enough, um, we're gonna get rid of your closet because it's disgusting. I was like big into not having booty shorts on. So I would take Wranglers and cut them off like right above the knee and like, fringe them out and that's what I'd wear as my shorts and then uh I wore just like like I had some cut off button ups from uh tractor supply and yeah try not to laugh at me right now it's fine uh, no I mean it's, it's just <laughs> funny so it's funny because I went to a small religious school for a little while and yeah. I did not have friends there I did not get along with people no. I got kicked out actually and I had then- one guy that hunted at my school and he didn't stay through high school but I still, I'm still friends with him to this day, but it was Spook's band's son. So he was like a gigantic hunter. Um, right. Because his dad had like a hunting TV show. So he was there, but he was like popular too. So I wasn't like super good buddies with him, you know? And so then, <laughs> but when I got into college, like it was different. Like I was always a little pudger in a uh, high school. So I got to college was like, I'm gonna get skinny. So I did. And then people were nicer to me. And then. A little what? What'd you call yourself? A pudger. Uh, like pudgy, <laughs> but like a name for it. And Wait, then, tell me nobody called you that in high school and that's where you got it. No, no one called me that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I definitely had girls call me fat in high school. Really? Yeah, they were mean. Little Green Hills girls. Yeah, and now they work at freaking mall stores and you're famous hunters. <laughs> ha! Justice. Uh, but it was it was funny going to college, though, and dudes who had been mean to me my whole life and then by sophomore year were, like, trying to date me and I'm like, you can go away now. That's yeah, exactly. It's so interesting because those small religious schools are not great environments. You know what? It's like, it's weird because me and Jonathan have had this talk of like, when we have kids, what are we going to do? Do we send them to public school? Do we send them to private school? It's like, I don't know. Do I want to send them to this private school where they're going to like have Bible classes and like not be taught, like not see as much as public school? 
but then like have kind of bitchy people around them? Or do I send them to a bigger public school where they could probably find their tribe, but they're going to be exposed to a whole lot more? It's like, I mean, so it's tough, but for me, just knowing what I went through, like I would take my shitty public school experience with 1800 kids in it over and over, over a small little private school. I'm just worried now because of the things that I've like, Jonathan tells me that he witnessed in school and like the things that he was exposed to. It's like, he went to a big public school, very big public school in our area. And while he's fine, like he was a partier and like, you know, it's like I didn't drink until I was almost 21. And like, you know, I'd never smoked anything, never been exposed to drugs really. And it's like, I, I liked my sheltered life. Like I, I'm honestly very thankful that I wasn't just like exposed to all of it from the age of like 13. So only they didn't neigh at you in the halls. Right. But it's like, you know, I turned out okay. Like you totally, you're totally fine. You know, so I'm just like, you you cry at night probably, but you're fine. (laughs) Well, I look back on it and I'm like, yeah, high school sucks, but at least I didn't peak. So Uh, no, I mean, like, I mean, literally all the people that I look back on, I'm like, not all of them. There are some girls that were like, that are like doing good now. But I look back, I'm like, yeah, uh, you weren't that special. And you kind of didn't do anything with your life. So. Right. No, I mean, as, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you almost have to say that for your own, your I mean, own yeah, self-worth, it, right? It definitely makes me like feel a little, a little better. <laughs> 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 you ever just look at yourself in the mirror and you're just like <laughs> <laughs> no and then oh my gosh seventh seventh grade katie made the mistake of telling people what our cow call is mm-hmm. so like what my dad said i don't know why this is our cow call okay oh. but my dad they come running when he does this and it's like and he drags it out longer like an actual call but it's suck 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 woo huh yeah okay no yeah so that's but it's like he draws out the words and like yells it do it no you can't pay me to do it i'm not doing it in this microphone right now no we won't air it Uh, okay do it (laughs) fun meeting you (laughs) (laughs) but it's like so i told people that in seventh grade so i was like i thought for some reason that would be cool and then they did it to me in the hallways and it was just like <laughs> like my a little a, a little bit of my innocence came to like backfire on me because uh-huh. I was like no way that someone wouldn't think that this is cool right yeah I, well you you grow up, <laughs> you grow up so different if you grow up on a ranch though it's you just do. like you don't have these weird preconceived notions about like right. Not being authentic to yourself, right? Right, and it's like I grew up around older people, and so it's like I knew how to talk to adults, but not to kids. Right, it was weird, and so all my friends, like all my bridal party, except for uh, my college roommate, all of them are like a solid three or four years older than me, really? if not more. And it's like I always made friends at horse shows or stuff like that that were like a full, like little high school generation above me. Yeah, but um. And so, yeah, it was weird in high school because it's like I'd go to horse shows and I'd be like normal and people thought I was like cool and stuff. Isn't it weird? And then I'd go to like school and I'd be like the weird kid. And I'm like, that's weird. (laughs) That's so like odd. I mean, because if you go to school with people who grow up in town or in the city, their ideas of what is cool, how you should be, how you should carry yourself is completely skewed in the opposite direction of how it is if you're a ranch or farm kid. It was interesting for me because I went to a big party wild high school Mm -hmm. with my two sisters but we also rodeoed right most of the people at that high school did not know we rodeoed because we didn't tell them i didn't because i don't want people to think i I was weird i should have been smarter but i wasn't well there's no way for you to know for sure it's just i ended up realizing right like the the redneck kids people don't like them right i'm not doing that and what was really funny so there is a redneck school in my county that I kind of wish I had gone to. Mm-hmm. And I actually dated, like, my high school boyfriend went to that school. So people there thought I was fine. Like, yeah. because they have tractor day at that school. So right. it's like, that. I sh- wish I had gone there. But, you know, uh, it's just, I'm, I'm way thankful that I am the way I am now, rather than, like, that person that I would have tried to be in high school, you know? Yeah, like, and you're probably a rarity because you didn't try to fit in. You're just like, 
this is temporary. I mean, I guess I don't know what your mindset was, but I, it's just so hard to handle that. I stuff probably when you're made a kid. some efforts to try to fit in, but it was like it just. I mean, it was like telling them our cattle call. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> working, right? So, yeah. I mean, it, having like a boyfriend in high school, and he was great. Like he was a great first boyfriend because like we just like he worked at my dad's farm on the tractors and stuff. And like, you know, and, and he just got married too. So it's kind of funny. Uh, we got married like a week apart, but, um, he, you know, kind of gave me someone to be friends with. And then he had friends. And so I wasn't completely alone during high school, right. but you know, when, while I was at school, it was definitely like, okay, I'm here to learn. <laughs> like I'm definitely not, like, I didn't go to, I went to one football game my entire, like, high school experience that's so crazy because yeah. i didn't have like i legit didn't have anyone to like sit with no i mean i'm i, I, I can relate to that because when i went to a religious school i was actually alone like i got along with zero people and i was one of those kids who had to get up at like 5 a.m and feed horses right and then go to school and then like go to a library and wait to get picked up at right. like eight o'clock and then go feed horses so like my life sucked when i was going to that christian type school and as soon as i got thrown out <laughs> it <laughs> My life got so much better because I was able to make a couple strategic social moves to actually be popular in high school. Right. And it was great. And uh, it was like I never looked back. And now it's just like I actually don't even know what people from any of those schools do with their lives. And nor do I care. It's funny because Jonathan was like Mr. Popular. Like yeah. he was captain of the wrestling team, was ripped, was like 6'3 and blonde and blue eyed and like, you know, just super haughty. And so it's like... He went through that, so he loved high school, and a lot of his friends that he, like, knew were girls that were mean to me in elementary school, and I held that grudge, and so then I was like, yeah, we're not hanging out with <laughs> him, and, uh, and, you know, it's like, no, we're not doing that, and so, like, I, we obviously have friends together now and stuff, but it was, like, weird dating him at first because they were, like, all of his friends were people that I was, I had been so intimidated of like forever because they were like the popular people. Uh, right. And it's like now, because it's like outside of the school setting and we're all older, like, cause I mean, he's three years older than me. So it's like all of his friends are older and stuff. It was like normal, but right. it was weird for me going into that. Cause it's like, I was still kind of separating us into like, I'm dating the popular guy and I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So your, your mental state probably went back to being a little, it was kid for weird. A little while, it was right? weird. I mean, it, it got better. Like it got, I mean, obviously it's fine, but yeah, yeah, it was weird at first. Yeah. So it's, it's so interesting because you went from like being reclusive, kind of a loner and, and adjusted to being truly in a spotlight, you know, with a lot it's of people. Weird. I mean, you probably have a lot of advice you could give kids. And I try to like say that. So that's why like all my stories, I try to be like on my Instagram story and stuff. I try to be really uh, truthful. And so like during this whole like weight loss thing, I've been super truthful about how much I started, like weighted when I started. Cause I mean, I was over. Oh, so you're like saying actual weights. Actual weight. Like I was over 200 pounds. And like, I'll tell you like every day what I weigh. Like I weighed 185 pounds today. It's like, you know, I, I try to be as authentic as possible these days because we don't have a lot of that, I feel like. No, we don't have you know? any of it. And so I've been like saying my actual weights and then I've done a couple YouTube videos on like, you know, super like very vulnerable things like talking about school, me not being cool. And then like also the fact that like I stayed a virgin till I was married and like the fact that I, you know, didn't drink till I was 21 and that I, you know, you can do that. And like, so I, I have tried to kind of get out of my comfort zone because that's stuff that generally is kind of taboo to talk about like well nowadays person. i mean if you mention all those things in one sentence you're gonna get picked on again right i mean not on this program we love jesus we i mean i love <laughs> jesus and you know it's like i did get picked on and i like blatantly was like i don't really care anymore so you know there's there's other people struggling about it and they're not talking about it because y'all make fun of them so i'm gonna go ahead and say it take the brunt and here you go no i mean so. and that's super noble because Kids now more than ever need guidance outside of their home mm -hmm. from these external sources where most of their information is coming from. You know, it, it's crazy because most people's ideas on politics, on faith, on current events comes from Facebook, Instagram, right. and Twitter. I like tweeted the day. I'm like, stop getting your news from memes. <laughs> I was 
like, because that's literally where people like get their facts these days. Is like memes. they do. I'm, okay, let's be real. It's probably better than getting it from CNN I or mean, even even Fox. I mean, yeah. Even I though mean, we're a right leaning program, at this point, even Fox is like the world's ending. At this point, I I'm a very non trusting person. I'm like, well, that's just because you're telling me that. Like I'm going through a little stage, and my mom's like hating me because of it. She's like, you know wear a mask and do this. And I'm just, I'm not saying masks are bad. I'm just saying I am questioning a lot of things. I mean, <laughs> about how could the world you not? Right if you were to look at like the mishandling of information on this COVID thing, how much it's changed, like on a week to week, month to month basis. Right. It's like, there is no possible way anybody who's just a layman person, like you or I, or somebody who's receiving information on this has any fucking clue what's going on right and it's yeah i i'm ha like jonathan you know is, he's like super patriot who is like i mean i i don't get in on all of the stuff that he does he kind of informs me about some things because he's like i mean he reads articles all day he watches videos all day he like is all about keeping up with everything mm -hmm. i just burped again sorry um two yeah, two it's water burps yeah i don't know put some vodka in the water it gets rid of burps no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this whole situation, I don't think anyone knows how to handle it. So no, I mean, clearly, even people at the tippy top don't have any idea on to handle it. So and no. it's an election year, which adds like an extra layer of yeah. what I like to call fuckery to the whole thing. Yeah. So that's true. Guys, it's not audio only. The gauge is on YouTube. Every single episode's on YouTube. We got 4K cameras, the best stuff. Check it out on YouTube if you want to see faces, bright, smiling faces. We don't just use this lighting for nothing. We video it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell. Lots of people are watching the videos, but not a lot of people are subscribing. Please help me. Help us. Help the gauge. Subscribe on YouTube. Anyway, she, she were talking about a okay, word that we, we can can't record, say. We can record this without the bad words. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Because I because this is actually good to talk about. Cause, cause no, it's really some, good to talk yeah. about, but you just can't say see you next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we were talking about British people and it's like a totally normal word. There. Oh, yeah, it is. Why are people so offended by it here? Well, I mean, I think the same thing about all the other words that I use. Because <laughs> they're just words? Because <laughs> they're just words. I mean, what's the difference between like saying shoot and the other one? Or Which one? Shoot. But what's the other one? I don't know. Shiite. Shiite? Are Shite. you Jewish? <laughs> no, when I say it like, I mean, I say it like that a lot, actually. You Shite, like, like a Scottish like person? Shit. Like two, like there's two uh -huh. syllables in the middle. Yep. Shit's Creek. Shit. Nope. Well, you can just say, I'm just saying. My, uh, my first cuss word was damn when I was four. No, damn it. It was damn it when I was four. Uh, my dad had his buddies over and they were watching hunting shows. And I had a like fairy princess outfit on and I just kept like walking in and out being like, damn it. Damn it. And I would just like walk back and forth and they'd be like, is she like, is she saying a bad word? And they're like, I think so. And so finally my dad was like, what'd you say? And I was like, nothing. I didn't say nothing. I just went back so to So you knew it was a bad word. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, see, sometimes kids don't realize and they just repeat. That's something I've learned is they'll just repeat. My best friend has kids and like the three-year-old uses them so perfectly that you can't even get mad at her. Kids are scary how smart they are Are we are recording? Now. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say what she said, but never mind. <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so there's, there's like no regulations with podcasts. You can say whatever you want. I know. You just don't want people to hear it. I just don't like it. No, it's smart. Yeah. You got to keep up the appearances. I just don't, I don't, because I do know that, like, young girls follow me. And, like, I mean, not just young girls, but, like, a younger audience follows me. And yeah. so I just try to not. No, you have to be a good example. social media. So. so, but anyway, like, we were talking about a second ago is, like, I feel weird saying, like, I only, like, hang out with, with guys. Like, that's who I get along with. And I feel like that's a typical girl thing. But it's, I mean, when you're, I feel like a lot of uh, outdoorsy women can kind of relate because you kind of have that nomadic like temperament where you're, you're you're okay being alone right and i feel like you're less dramatic sometimes i've met some dramatic hunters okay but a lot of them are a little more on the like non-drama side and i mean it's just a fact that girls come with more drama than guys and 
It's just a fact. It happens. I'm and so glad that a girl is saying this right yeah. now. And no it's kidding. just, you know, and, and I'm, I am very, like, I don't tolerate it if someone brings drama into my life. And so I've cut off friends pretty savagely over that. And so generally it's just easier to hang out with dudes. And a lot of my friends came from, you know, Jonathan, like I inherited them when we started dating and right. then now they're just my friends too. Um, and then like I had guy friends in college and stuff that I, you know, I still keep in touch with, but you know, I have no problem going to a hunting camp and it like, like I went to a hunting camp in, you know, Canada and it was all dudes and me. I mean, the, the guy who owned it had a, had a wife. And so like I hung out with her and stuff too, but you know, I'm very comfortable in that setting of, me and a bunch of dudes and there's no like weirdness and it's just like chill right it's like i prefer that so no i mean it's different in the industry that you're in but yeah most women especially nowadays it's just like oh you can't be around guys alone guys are dangerous oh i don't think that way yeah that's, i mean but that's, that's how people think now that's not even in my like mind i guess i didn't yeah. think about it that way but i just you know i guess some people would have thought it was weird that i went to canada and like was in a hunting lodge with a bunch oh, of dudes. There's going to be me. women and even some like some, what do what they call those guys who like support everything women say? They're just like white knights. Simps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Simps. Huh. What? Simps. Simps. I think that's it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Incels. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have heard that one, right? Yeah, I've heard that one. <laughs> Incels. I heard it because I heard it the night for the first time. We were watching Criminal Minds and one yeah. of them was like a killer. Yeah, I got that from the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> calls them incels, involuntary celibates. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're like that. But, That's uh, mean. I was voluntarily celibate, which sucked probably more. Just saying. <laughs> you, know, you hear that from very many girls. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Jonathan, it was like, I mean, kudos to him, though, because, I mean, he was not. And then I started dating him, and I learned very early that when I was, like, through college, when I was dating, I had to be very upfront because I like for the first couple of guys that I dated a little bit and stuff, it was like, you know, it caught them off guard. And then they're like, yeah, I, I don't really want anything to do with this. And I'm like, okay. And so then once I started meeting dudes, I was like, Hey, just so you know, um, we're probably never going to have sex unless we get married. So like just telling you that and yeah, so i mean most guys are kind of be like oh, cool yeah. you got a number for one of your uh friends yeah i mean exactly and so and it was funny there was rumors around my college campus like dudes would like say that they slept with me like i remember there was one guy on the basketball team that did that and like really? told everyone that he slept with me just yeah. because he definitely knew that just because no he one definitely <laughs> didn't yeah and uh and i like he ne didn't even he ghosted me because I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And so with Jonathan, cause like, I just, I had known that like he, like I'd known girls he had like dated and stuff. So I knew that he wasn't. And so within like a couple of days of us meeting, I was like, yeah, um, just so you know, like this isn't going to happen. And he was like, okay. And it was like, I had heard from other girls that he was definitely a playboy before me. But for some reason, when he met me, he was like, yeah, I don't really care. I'll do it for you. And so we were like very, it was weird. We met randomly, but his parents live on the backside of my parents' farm. So we're neighbors kind of. And so his brother had always like tried to hit me up to fish, like our back pond. And I'm like, no. And so then Jonathan was like, you want to fish? And I'm like, okay. And so then he came over and we like, you know, went to the barn and hung out and talked and stuff. And it was like right at the beginning of muzzleloader season that's how i remember it it was right at the beginning of muzzleloader season so we went hunting the next day and just like you know he fell harder at first and then um i like said i love you first it was weird like because at first i was like don't say i love you like this is too soon and then all of a sudden i was like I screamed Whatever. It at him. so yeah um it was weird like we were way too serious way early and then just like kept going no, I get that. That's it, how I was with my wife. It felt like we were embarrassed to tell people how long we had been dating when we first started because it was like, it looked like we should be getting engaged soon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, we waited till we had been dating like two years to get engaged. But um, yeah, we were finally, we were so excited when we hit the year mark because it finally felt like we had caught up to how serious we were. 
but he's awesome. I mean, the fact that he like went from, cause he's older than me too. So the fact that he had gone from like living by himself for since he was 18 and, you know, living that different lifestyle and then just like completely changing for me because he knew that that's like the path that I wanted to take. And he was like, you know what? You're wifey material. So I want to do that too. And it was just like, I never once was pressured in that whole almost four year or ordeal. And it's like awesome. I mean, there's a good lesson there for all you young ladies out there. Don't settle. Don't settle. Seriously. Like there is or a guys don't settle, especially don't settle if you're a guy. No. And it's like, I, I went through so many guys in college that were so toxic that I thought was the one. And if I could just make it work and it was all me and all that good stuff. And you know, I, I had more than one guy get a girl pregnant while cheating on me. <gasps> I mean, knowing the ground rules you set for the relationship, yeah. you couldn't have been too surprised when that happened, well, right? It, yeah, it like and it's just like okay, this makes sense. See, so, yeah. but yeah, so it was like whatever. But um, yeah, it was really. I wasn't really looking for. This is so cliche. When I stopped looking, is when it happened. And like same for him. He had like literally gone and partied in Florida like two days before with his buddy. I was like, I'm not settling down till I'm 30, and then met me. That's how it goes. Yeah. But so there's lessons in everything. You speak so much wisdom. The young ladies are so lucky to have you in their corner to help them. Well, thank you for saying that. I try. Like, I really, like, while I do have a, a male demographic too, I, I feel like I'm kind of like, this is, this is what, what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I feel like, cause I, I'm a woman of faith. I do think things happen for a reason. I do think that, you know, if we're given a platform, we're supposed to speak about our faith and about our values and things like that. And so, you know, I, I really do try to like leave it all out there. Yeah. I mean, as you should, people could, should be able to take kind of a page out of that book to be authentic, uphold your values, but also put out good content. I mean, that's right. what we need. The more fake, the worse off we're all going to be. So. Yeah. And the more that everyone tries to mold into a certain what they think they should be in is like when it gets worse. Cause like I said earlier, there are kind of equations to get to a certain point in social media. Like if you do something perfectly right as the majority does it, you'll probably get to like the end goal that you want. Right. But it's when you step back and say, you know what, I'm going to do what I think is right and post what I think is important is when it gets harder and when it is more important, I feel like. I feel like it is a, a little more meaningful and it's not for as much instant gratification, but just for like being authentically you. Right. So, and I mean, it's hard to do that. It's very tempting to kind of go with the status quo and do those like quote unquote thirst traps that will like, for sure get you more likes than the picture you're like on a tractor. I don't know. You know, I don't even know what to say about that, but it's like sticking to you in the long run, like 100% always works out better. Right. Well, and for you too, because at some point you're not going to do it anymore. And what's going to be left of you if you just do fake shit for your whole life. Right. Some it's like shell of a person. That's like, that's one thing that I, uh, I'm always baffled by when someone's like, you just hunt for Instagram. I'm like, yes, I changed all of my habits and all of my passions to do something I don't actually like for Instagram. Right. Okay. Yeah. And whatever. <laughs> I, I, that, you'd be surprised so how much I get that. Yeah. Though. Cause people are so mad. People just, people are just mad now. So I love posting pictures of me when I was like nine with a deer. Yeah. You know, I'm like, Oh, Instagram didn't exist back then. <laughs> MySpace. You probably did right. it for MySpace. I didn't lie. have a MySpace. I wasn't allowed to have Facebook until I was in like high school. Really? Mm -hmm. I wish MySpace was still a thing. But So I could rank your friends and put them in their place? Yeah, you could show like who's important to you. If you're not in my top whatever, then I don't care about you. <laughs> I already kind of do that in real life. I'm like, girls, if you didn't make it into the bridal party, like... <laughs> Like we didn't like I literally don't have that many friends like like girlfriends that are super close. I have friends that, you know, you have the friends that are doing their own thing and you're doing your own thing and you like come together and it's like no time has passed. I have yeah. those friends. That's how like that's most friends the older right. you get though. Right, and I have those friends through horror shows and a couple from school and stuff. But 
you know, I really don't have that many friends that I, you know, avidly hang out with or, you know, see on a regular basis. There's no time really either. And it's like no one's schedules line up and like my schedule is kind of free. And so I'll call people in the middle of the day and they're like, Katie, I have a job where it's nine to five. I can't just like come ride with you right now. I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think. Ty's probably going to kill us if we keep talking. If we I get know, to the, what, but I think a- we can keep three? talking for another, like, four hours. There's but. that, but what is it? It's 4.30, so we're going to have to, like, hustle to go get something to eat and then get yeah. you back to the airport, too. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's call this. We'll keep talking. Plug your social medias. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you want to follow me, go to my Instagram, which is at Katie Van Slyke, or my Facebook, which is Katie Van Slyke, or at Katie Van Slyke 96. And, I mean, I have Twitter, too, which is at Katie Van Slyke, but let's be honest, I don't post there very much. But Twitter's you're so welcome. Complicated. You're welcome to follow me on all of those if you would like to. Yeah, for good, authentic shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> This has been The Gage, hosted by me, Chance Conrado, produced and edited by our guy Ty Yeager. Shout out to the executive producers, Dustin Pointer and Cody Denton. Marketing and content by Cassie Emerson. Our theme song is by Shay Ashire and the Night Howlers. Make sure to rate and review this podcast, as well as follow The Gage on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to The Gage wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys next time.